an airplane crash turns a quiet neighborhood into a disastrous site. Multiple vehicles and homes were destroyed, and it caused a big mess for fire crews. You found stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. Early in the morning, a Cessna Citation II crashes into a Murphy Canyon neighborhood in San Diego, California. It was on final approach to Montgomery Gibbs Executive Airport, and all six people aboard were killed, including two music industry professionals, Dave Shapiro and Daniel Williams. But it was more than just a tragic plane crash. This one caused a firestorm on the ground. At least 15 homes were destroyed or damaged in the crash. Fire spread quickly through the neighborhood, igniting vehicles and structures. Over 100 residents were forced to evacuate. Now here's where it gets a bit unusual. Most small plane crashes impact one home, maybe two, but this one lit up an entire block. To put it in perspective, it's one of the most destructive small aircraft incidents in recent U.S. history in terms of property damage and loss on the ground. It ranks right up there with the recent Philadelphia crash back in January. Both aircraft were a similar size. Among the chaos, the news was reporting that one vehicle fire was particularly stubborn, burning for hours, despite multiple attempts to put it out. But I texted a contact I have out in the fire department, and he confirmed that no battery electric vehicles were involved. However, there were two hybrid electric vehicles on fire in this incident. And that matters because hybrids can still contain lithium-ion battery packs. And those batteries can reignite even after the flames seem like they're out. This isn't your average gasoline fire. Once those batteries go into thermal runaway, you're looking at heat, smoke, and potential for delayed ignition that can drag on for hours or even days. It gets more complicated. This is California, where it's extremely common for homes to have battery energy storage systems. If any of these systems were damaged in the crash, that adds a new layer of hazard. These aren't just backup batteries. They're often wired directly into rooftop solar arrays, and they have a decent amount of stored energy. That stored energy can behave like a ticking time bomb after a structure fire. Damaged battery units can off-gas flammable smoke and have the potential for delayed thermal runaway, putting both firefighters and cleanup crews at risk. They can also be very difficult to extinguish. We saw similar issues during the cleanup of the LA Palisades and Eaton Wildland fires. Both involve residential battery energy storage systems and electric vehicles that complicated the EPA's response. I actually spent some time on scene with the EPA coordinators during those events, and they were very clear. It's not just a fire risk, it's a post-fire hazard, toxic residue, compromised cells with stranded energy, and the need for careful cleanup operations. And here in San Diego, that's a very real possibility. Even if these systems weren't initially the cause of the fire, once they're damaged, they can absolutely contribute to reignition or create challenges for the recovery teams. Crews now have to identify, isolate, and safely dispose of these batteries without triggering another event. And here's the thing. This type of complexity isn't rare anymore. Between electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, solar panels, home batteries, and even e-bikes in the garage, the average home today looks more like a small energy hub than a traditional residence. That's not a bad thing, but when disaster strikes, it means crews are walking to a scene that looks a lot different than the risk 10 years ago. Firefighters now need to identify damaged energy storage systems, isolate any remaining charge, and treat seemingly cold batteries like they could reignite at any time. And during the cleanup, it's not just about removing debris, it's about tracking down embedded battery cells, checking for damage, and making sure no one gets hurt. This shift doesn't just affect the response, it also affects the rebuild. It affects insurance, environmental testing, and the timeline for getting families back into their homes. Investigators believe the plane may have clipped power lines about two miles southeast of the airport just before impact. The conditions were foggy, and reports were that the airport's weather systems and runway lights might not have been operational, and that probably played a role. But the full cause is still under investigation. This crash wasn't just deadly. It was destructive on a scale we rarely see in small private planes. And when lithium-ion batteries are in the mix, the cleanup gets even more dangerous, expensive, and a lot more complex. As we continue to electrify everything from cars we drive to the homes we power, incidents like this force us to ask, are we ready to deal with the consequences when those systems get damaged in unpredictable ways? Because it's not just about what burns anymore, it's about what could start burning long after the fire trucks left.